girlfriend, Meriwether. Look how big your udder is getting. Cowboy, how you doing, buddy? You're gonna be an uncle like 12,000 times. How are we doing, guys? Let's get our walk on, everybody. Hi, big mama. How's my girlfriend? Kisses, honeys, my babies. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I'm gonna try to film out here as much as I can. It is incredibly windy on this beautiful Friday evening here in East Tennessee. We're making sure all everybody's looking good and fed, put away for the night, whatever. Cough it up, girl, cough it up. You okay, honey? So we are really starting to keep an extra eye out with all of my goat mamas. Uh, the first day of possibility could be as early as next Friday, which is the 27th. <laughs> I don't know. I just want healthy, happy, warm babies, okay? I don't care when they come. Uh, well, that's not true. 85 and sunny is always so much better, right? But for real, we're trying to um, close out any little details that we need to do to make sure that we are set. Um, I'm gonna try to not move them indoors into the stalls. I'm gonna try to push it to as, next, as close to next Friday as possible because I want them out walking and roaming and doing all the things that they do. I just don't wanna get caught in a bad situation with them actually just plopping babies on the ground and it's 40 degrees. We've talked about that before, but some of my girls are looking um, bodacious. See? Let's step into my office. Come on. All right, guys. I know you understand. We have to bring it to the car, y'all. It's too, it is way windy. We were supposed to have a bunch of thunderstorms today and it ended up raining earlier than we thought, which was last night, kind of overnight. And then it moved out, but we've got a ton of wind. And yes, the leaves are beautiful this time of year here. So uh, if you are in the East Tennessee, Western North Carolina area, you know, but if you're traveling and you're trying to get a little bit of a view of some beautiful leaves, I'm sure West Virginia is just as beautiful as well. Um, guys, we, um, you're really pushing into peak. Usually we peak around, on average, we peak around the 25th up to Halloween. It just depends on what the weather's done. Um, it, it isn't peaking yet, but we're going to be moving into that within the next week. So it's a, it's going to be a busy week. I hope you're doing well. You need a hug? Hug, come on, come hug me so you don't go punch somebody because all the crap that's happening is just a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just insane, all of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, so I want to focus on something very important, which we have talked about for a long time. And um, I've mentioned this many different times in many different ways that I believe, as you know, that we have been in a recession for well over a year, year, year and a half. Uh, that's what I believe based upon my own experiences and listening to things and reading things. I mean, really, honestly, truly, uh, we're in a recession. You know that. The numbers are a bunch of malarkey. That's going to be my word today. Um, malarkey is, is an understatement. Um, I think it's so funny that the other day they came out with the, the retail numbers and they're like, oh, well, um, the Americans are just spending so much more money. Well, duh. Have you seen inflation lately? <laughs> Let me tell you something real quick. My father is this month retiring from a major uh, grocery establishment. He has worked for this particular company for, uh, gosh, I don't want to short him, but I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of about 42 years. So he knows a lot about retail, okay? And I know for a fact, last year, when we really started seeing prices jump on a lot of things, lettuce was one of them. I, I know I don't eat iceberg lettuce on much at all, but it jumped in major price. And I remember him talking about it. So this was well over a year ago. I even have it on video, okay? And he said that um, we were talking about, he was like, oh, my, he said, my store sales are more than they've ever been. And I was like, Really? He said, but let me tell you. He said, we've been looking at the information. We've been looking at the data. I don't know what my hair is doing, y'all. I don't care. Uh, he said, we've been looking at it. He said, we're actually not selling any more products than we did the year before. We're not selling more goods, but we are making a whole lot more money, and it's because of inflation. So, 
that we already established this here on this channel and I know you guys are smarter than me so you know this as well as I do I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir but my point is is they're still trying to pull this shenanigans and some people I guess still believe it I don't know I don't I don't know who believes this crap but I just assume somebody does I don't know but I want to read this to you because I think this is something that I think we need to talk about. We have also talked about on several different videos that if we knew the true numbers of everything, food, gas, and we didn't have any real true, you know, they didn't take this out, put this in, da, 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 put a little sprinkle on this, but don't tell you that. If we really just laid it out there as far as the numbers, I have said for quite a while that I believe the, the several individuals saying that you would probably cry because you would realize that we are actually in a depression already. Okay. The reason you're not melting down, the reason why the country hasn't completely burned down yet, which is what they're trying to make it do. You know that as well as I do is because they are trying to keep your confidence level up. That's why they lie to you about all kinds of reports. That's why they lie to you about the dollar. They're, they're lying to us folks. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you believe you, I ask you all the time, how much, how, how bad do you want to be lied to? You don't have to be lied to by your boyfriend or your husband or your, your kids or your mom or your cousin anymore because the, 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 they are lying to you so hard it makes up for everything else in your life. But there is a channel I do listen to from time to time um, because it's hard for me to sit. We're on the go a lot like you guys. Um, there's a few channels I like to listen to, economic, you know, economists and different economic channels and things like that. They more focus on that type stuff because they like to go over the articles and news of the day. And I can't keep up with everything on my own because I'm out here chasing goats and looking at their udders. <laughs> so it's nice to um, kind of rely on a couple of good sources. And um, S Stephen Gardner, he's got a huge channel, okay? He doesn't need me to give him a shout out, but I will. Seems like a nice gentleman. Um, and he puts up one or two or three videos a day. Sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long, and he does a lot of interviews. And he had a gentleman on day before yesterday. Yes, catch this. So he had a gentleman on, uh, in, on one of his videos, I believe it was day before yesterday. The gentleman's name was Michael Lush, and he was going over comparing the numbers of today to 1930. So basically kind of the kickoff to the Great Depression, right? Which we know the height of the Great Depression wasn't till what, about 1932, 33. And I always tell you, I'm like, well, my grandparents didn't really know because <laughs> they were a lot, so many of us mountain folks. And, and if, you know, us folks that have folks that lived out in the mountains and then were poor as dirt already they really didn't um, recognize a Great Depression like a lot of other people would have because they were already so dirt poor. But let's go over these numbers real quick. I want you to hear this because it's pretty staggering. So he did a comparison on the numbers. You can go watch the video. I will, I'll, I'll, I will pin it um, in the top comment or I'll put it in the description, okay? So it's one of the two places as always. So just look, okay? If you want to listen to the whole thing, um, it's pretty good. I would recommend that you do this. So he goes over some statistics from 1930 to, to basically this past week. Okay, so let's just hit this real quick, okay? And you, all this information is from him. So he talked about in 1930, the average house cost the average human being $3,900. If you truly just accounted for basic inflation over time, the average home today would be $71,000. Well, we actually know today that the average home is $416,000. So hang with me. Let's go over this. So then you can answer to your own self if you believe that we are in a, quote, shh, silent depression. That's what they're calling it. Okay, so food. So if a person were to spend $100 on food in 1930, which was major, Okay, because he talks about how the average person probably on a weekly or so, whenever they went, they might have spent like eight to ten bucks. But if they happened to spend a hundred dollars on groceries, it would have easily lasted them six months because you got so much. But a hundred dollars on groceries then would be equivalent to two thousand fifty nine dollars today. I want you to think about how long. Now, you may be an exception, but $2,000 for the average family of, say, four to six people in a home is $2,000. Now, if they're really crafty, it might last. That's why we talk about cooking from scratch and being really, you know, having a lot of skills. But you know as well as I do that the average 
person and family home would not make it most likely on $2,059 and that in groceries and that would last them six months. I don't believe that. Um, I know what groceries cost. I know what people spend up probably the average family spends, um, average family. So there is that alone on the food or groceries. Gas alone in 1930 um, was costing folks 10 cents a gallon. 10 cents. I remember back when I was, when James and I first got married, it was 79 cents here in middle, when we lived in Nashville, 79 cents in Lebanon, Tennessee. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Um, now, if you looked and said, okay, well, if it was 10 cents in 1930, what would it be today? It should be $1.73. If you just did average, you know, price of going up, average inflation, yeah, 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 it, yada, 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 it would be $1.73. The national average as of this video is $3.55. I can tell you that in November, uh, November the 8th, I tell you this all the time, 2020, we were paying in the $1.52 to $1.57 range. So we were actually below the $1.73 not too long ago. What will it be in a month from now, six months from now? Let's all brace ourselves, right? I know. Okay, a car. If you had a car, and you know as well as I do that in 1930, most folks did not own a car, <laughs> okay? Very few did. That was a major ordeal, okay? You had a mule, maybe, or a donkey, <laughs> but a car, you were, you were high fluting, right? Well, that would be $860 if you translated that to today, what the average car should cost you should be around $15,000. Should be. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, a little toot toot, go around $15,000. Not bad. Well, we now know that the average car this year has skyrocketed to $48,000. And I can personally attest to this because, you know, we've had a car dilemma over the last year and we've been doing a lot of shopping. So to, for me to tell you that the average car price for the American citizens at this point in time, at around $48,000, huh, that's not a stretch whatsoever. That's for a new car. Okay, income, check this out. You've got to listen to this. The average income in 1930 was $4,800, 4,800 bucks, okay? That's what the average person would make, okay? Today, that would translate to the average income being $85,000, okay? Do you wanna know now what actual the actual number is? the average person is actually making $56,000. So when we go over all of these numbers um, from Michael Lush, um, you're finding out that what the number was, what it should be, and then what reality is. And what's even worse is that the average person here is making almost 30,000, is that right? Yeah, $29,000 less than where they should be in order to keep up with these average, just the average numbers. So you have to ask yourself, does this feel like recession to you? Surely it does at a minimum. But the point that he's making here is you were going into the, you were into a depression and a major collapse. And this is what people were making. And you're, we are worse off today than people were in 1930. And you have to say, okay, well, it got worse for these folks. So if we keep pressing forward with the situation that we're in right now, that doesn't include war, uh, war here, war there, war here, um, and the cost of inflation continuing. Um, folks, if this is all true, which I have no reason to doubt it, and neither do you, this may not be the situation that you personally are in and God love you if that's, I, I wish, I hope that's true for everybody watching this video. Folks, we're in a whole lot of trouble. Whole lot of trouble. This is why I tell you, you know, we talk about homesteading and cooking and a lot of things, but I also talk about a lot of these types of subjects because I want people to be aware of how dire the situation is, which is why I keep telling you the basics of Please pay off any debts that you can. Don't buy anything crazy. If you need a new pair of blue jeans or if your baby needs a new pair of shoes, fine. That's probably not going to be the major setback for you. Although we do know that the average American right now is getting by by burning up their credit cards. 
okay? But do not make any major financial decisions that's gonna set you back because you have no guarantees, okay? And to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to prepare your family and your home, food, water, medicine, um, tools that you need to protect, you know, the tools that we talk about to protect yourself. Do the things that count to give you longevity in terms of your sustainability. Because folks, the lack of leadership, excuse me, representation is staggering. And they would rather send your money. I'm going to say this, and I know this is going to sound horrible, but I'm going to say it. You're just pimped out is what you are. They don't care if you eat. They don't care if you pay your bills. They don't care about any of that. They just want your tax dollars and to, to use and abuse you. You're pimped out to send all this money elsewhere. And even though we have allies and even though we have friends, there comes a point where we have to take care of our own first. I will leave it at that. You know how I feel and I know how you feel. No one's coming to help us, folks. We're just being placed out in the wind. So you have to do the things that count in order to take care of yourself because this is where we stand. So ask yourself tonight again, are we in a recession? Hmm, probably. But even worse, are we in a silent depression? That doesn't chill you to the bone, nothing will. Pray for those that are not preparing because they are going to be awakened one day and it's going to be the worst day of their life when that happens don't let that be you get ahead of the curve hope you have a great weekend coming up we've got videos coming your way we've been doing some things with the farm and the kids and everything else preparing and all the things so we're back with our videos this weekend took a, a day off I wouldn't it wasn't really a day off it's just i didn't really film that much but i appreciate you being here stay the course don't give up your kids need you your grandbabies need you remember you are the last frontier. Like, subscribe, and share. I love y'all. Have a great evening. God bless. Godspeed. And we will see you on the next video.